Well, the long wait is finally over. AMD's new 4000 series processors are here. Not really. Building upon their highly popular H-series cases, the H210i, H510i, H510 Elite, and H710i from NZXT offer a sleek yet functional chassis for PC enthusiasts. Ample interior space and airflow make the H-series the perfect choice for both air cooling as well as water cooling, while the intelligent features offer seamless integrated temperature monitoring and lighting controls. To learn more about the H-series chassis from NZXT for your next build, head to the sponsored link in the description below. I've heard it over and over and over, and I've talked about whether or not you should upgrade, whether you should wait. We've known that AMD's 4000 series Next Zen process, next, not Next Gen, Next Zen processors? Or, okay, whatever, I digress. We've known that they're coming. I've seen a lot of people waiting for 4000 series. We've seen all the fiasco between X570 versus B550 on CPU support, and they've talked about it. It's because of the, the, the ROM can't support that many CPUs, and it's kind of like, what do you mean you can't support that many CPUs? I mean. How many CPUs are there really to support? Well, I woke up this morning to an email from AMD talking about their brand new 4000 series processors now with Radeon graphics. I was a little bit sidelined by this, or sidelined, side, I was sucker punched, I don't know. I didn't know that this was actually coming. Normally AMD will give us some sort of marketing material ahead of time or some sort of a briefing. Maybe they did and I wasn't a part of it. I don't know, I've been a part of every briefing up till now. I have a feeling that they just sort of shotgun this one out there for a very specific reason. Let's talk about what, what we've got right here. We've technically got, well, four different CPU families going on here. So it's all being touted as AMD uh, 4000 series Zen 2 seven nanometer architecture. So anyone that's like already savvy enough to understand the AMD lineup probably just went, wait a minute, what do you mean 4000 series Zen 2? So we already know that in the launch history of Ryzen, it's been Ryzen or Zen architecture, which is the 1000 series processors. Anything that's got a one in front of it, 1800X, 1700X, whatever. Then you've got Zen Plus, which was actually the Zen, or the 2000 series processors. So anything that's a 2700X, 2600X or whatever. And then there was Zen 2, which was the 3000 series processors. So you had Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2. So every architecture or every family of CPUs up to this point has been like a, some sort of an in increase in the Zen architecture, Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2. So theoretically, a lot of people were expecting 4000 series processors to be Zen 2 Plus. If you we were going like, if this is kind of like Intel's old and abandoned TikTok architecture, then that would be their TikTok, you know, Zen and then a plus and then, and then a plus. Well, that all changed with the 3000 series because when they launched the 3000 series processors, they also launched a 3400G and a 3200G. Now they were 3000 series processors. However, they were still the Zen Plus architecture, not Zen 2. And they were also running uh, the same Vega integrated graphics that were found on the 2200 and 2400G. So that started a little bit of a naming convention confusion there where if you just went, if it's got a three, it's a Zen two, then you'd be wrong. That you'd also be wrong in this instance here if you thought that the four meant that it was some sort of a new 4000 series processor, because to be fair, none of these processors right here are any different than 3000 series processors in a positive way. In fact, you kind of lose some CPU performance with these. We're gonna talk about that right now. So you've got, you've got I said there's actually four different processor types going on here. You've got new Ryzen, fourth, thousand series processors as well as new Athlon processors and Athlon has always been their entry level uses the same socket but it's uber budget can get you up and running maybe playing some side scroller games at 60 fps and then you know, obviously you have your full-fledged cpu processors which are you know the ryzen zen architecture processor then you've got over here the pro variant of those processors and there's not a lot of difference between the the regular and the pro Pro is nothing new. Pro has been around for a while. It's designed more towards enterprise, um, business solutions, cloud based. The difference is all of these processors actually have Radeon graphics built into them. Now, traditionally on AMD, the only processors that had built in GPUs, and this is going back like way beyond Phenom actually, the very first AMD processor to have built in graphics again, if, I think almost ever, is actually the 2200G and the 2400G. Now, both of those were based off of Vega graphics and Vega being their full-size variant, they're sitting up there, um, were good graphics cards, 
the, they kind of gone down the path of HBM, which became, I guess, a little bit ahead of its time, where the CPUs were not nearly fast enough to need that level of memory bandwidth in terms of gaming applications. Of course, there are compute applications that can totally take advantage of that HBM speed. But Vega graphics um, were basically just very shaved down um, you know, GPU cores and integrated into the CPU itself so that you had one CPU that had both, well, one chip that had CPU and a GPU in it. Nothing new, Intel's been doing it all along. It's just they never really put any sort of emphasis on performance of their iGPUs because no one really ever used them for anything ba other than basic VGA functionality and then, or troubleshooting. But moving on, AMD decided to integrate graphics to give some sort of a, an entry level, realistic, usable gaming performance with their iGPU, which is why they, well, APU is what they've always been called. Um, and yes, guys, I'm well aware of the entire APU lineup of AMD when I say almost ever. I'm talking about their full-fledged CPUs. I'm sure I let enough time go by to people already comment, Jay, there was the whole FM series of stuff. You know, there was, there was I even did a, uh, what was it, an A10 5700K, I think it was. Um, talking about, it's one of my most viewed videos on the channel, so I'm obviously well aware of it. I'm talking about the full-fledged processor performance with a GPU built into it. We all know that the APUs um, and the A-series processors were not nearly as fast as their FX brethren. But moving on, now that we've cleared that up. AMD has now launched Radeon graphics all the way up to the 700 tier. What do I mean by 700? Well, the very first one on the list right here, the Ryzen 7 4700G. Now, anything that's got a G in it, in its name, means graphics, and it has graphics in it. So, 2400G, 2200G, um, those had Vega graphics in it. What I started to get on a tangent about earlier, and I kind of got derailed, and now I'm back. I just took a little bit of a detour through the ghetto, and now we're back over here. The 3000 series, the 3200G and 3400G, were very confusing because they were not Zen 2 architectures. They had 3000 in their name, but all they were basically were binned and faster versions of a 2200 and 2400G using basically the same graphics. So it became very confusing to people to go, wait a minute, it's a 3000 series processor, but it's not Zen 2. Fast forward to our reviews of the 3300X and the 3100 being basically true 3000 series Zen 2 processors, but with no graphics in them. So that's, that's what made it very confusing, is the fact that you now have a 3100, a 3200, a 3300, and a 3400. But the 3300 is actually faster than the 3400 for the CPU performance, but the 3400 is listed higher number-wise because it has a GPU in it, therefore making it a little bit more of a value proposition because of the fact that it has graphics in it. And then the 3100 is actually faster than the 3200, but for the very same reason, it's numbered lower. So it's almost like they're taking a page out of Intel's naming convention to almost sort of confuse people. Okay, but that's fine. Now we're at 4000 series with GPUs in them, right? No, basically every single 4000 series CPU on this list is a variant of a 3000 series CPU. Sure, it's still seven nanometer. 3000 CPUs are great, we've already talked about it, but with all the highly anticipated 4000 series processor discussion taking place, this just seems a little bit disappointing. So the, the 4700G is basically the exact same part as a 3700, but with Radeon graphics. So let's talk about the Radeon graphics part for a second here before we drill down the list. We don't know what graphics they are. They were very, very proud and adamant of promoting Vega graphics in their APUs because it's Vega. And it was basically all AMD had to rely on for their Radeon division because they went down that incorrect path and they sort of um, had to double down on that and then just promote it like, hey, it's Vega in a CPU. There is no mention of what graphics are in here. There's no mention of the architecture. There's no mention of what family it is, nothing. Not on the website, not on any of this marketing material, which really leaves us in this curious position of what graphics are in there. All we know is it has eight GPU cores. What does that mean? What does that mean, eight GPU cores? Okay, well that's just some sort of a variant, right? You have eight, well it's eight core, 16 threads, so maybe each core has some sort of a GPU built into it. Well, if you go down here to the 4600G, it's got seven. That's an odd number. <laughs> so there's no, there's no mathematical equation there in terms of bits and bytes and all that sort of stuff. So basically that's all we know about graphics is that- It has some. It has three Radeon. It has three Radeons. Or seven Radeon. 
How many radions does that one have? Now, I know this seems like this is nothing but a, a harping piece, and it is a little bit, because I feel like AMD's kind of got this model of two steps forward and one step back when it comes to the way they do things. It's kind of like, you know what? AMD can do no wrong. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the AMD we're used to. There's something else about these processors here. And I don't think anyone watching this video should even care. You wanna know why? All of them are available via SIs and system integrators and OEMs only. That means you're not gonna be able to go out and buy this processor. So that gives us a glimmer of hope. And that means they're probably gonna be coming out with 4,000 series processors that are potentially a Zen Plus, Zen 2 Plus architecture. Maybe some increased clock, uh, I keep saying clock speed, clock core speed. Core clock speed. Is it just clerk and mead? Clerk and mead speed. <laughs> <laughs> Memory speed speed? Well, I know this video is all over the place, but so is the information presented. We, we thought initially that these were just 3000 series processor variants, which again, are very good processors. Don't get me wrong. It's just the problem is when you add a Ford of this to make people think it's better, like one better, it's not. Because the only CPU on here that actually shares TDP, and clock speed with its 3000 series counterpart is the 4700G. Everything below that is up to 300 megahertz slower while maintaining the same TDP. So to, to be fair, they've, they've integrated graphics into this, but made the entire, the total power draw of the chip the same with graphics in there. Now, something has to give when you add something that's gonna be sharing power. And in this case, it's the core speed itself. And that's how they're getting the voltage and, and the TDP down to maintain that package draw with having a GPU in there now is something has to give. The only thing that was existing before was this core, core clock and core speed. So of course that had to, um, I said core clock and core speed, those are the same things. Core clock and voltage had to reduce, therefore with it, clock speed. You have two different families of processors. No, three different families of processors here that all include the naming 3050G, 3100, 3150GE, 3150G, 3300, all right, 3200G, 3300, and 3400G. All of those names I just said actually represent four different processor families. <laughs> yeah, you've got Athlon Silver, Athlon Gold, you've got Zen Plus and Zen 2. No, you don't have Zen 2, oh yeah, Zen 2, 3100, 3300. Seven CPUs within 3050 to 3300, or 3400. See, I can't even keep track of it. It's ridiculous. I don't think it's gonna matter to anyone at the end of the day. I truly don't believe anyone watching this video right now is gonna run out and buy an HP or a Lenovo gaming desktop. Now, at first I thought, okay, maybe they're just talking about this being mainstream PC. Video watching, not even rendering, video watching them, not really gaming, just a general purpose PC, internet browser. No, they say right here specifically for gaming, right here, with responsive performance and flawless visuals with Radeon graphics built in, customers can now enjoy enthusiast level perf Enthusiast level performance. <laughs> Wait, I just saw that. Customers can now enjoy enthusiast level performance for gaming and content creation in AMD Ryzen 4000 G series processors powered by pre-built desktops without the need for discrete graphics card. <gasps> there were so many buzzwords in that. That doesn't tell you anything. You don't tell us what the, what the, process, the Radeon graphics are. You talk about enthusiast level, but you don't tell us what it is. And every enthusiast is gonna see through these CPUs and what they are. And then the pro variants of all of this basically just include uh, various security level features, uh, the cloud syncing, like I said, for easy imaging and rollouts across you know, your cloud infrastructure for your business, and encrypted memory so that when your computer goes to sleep, the memory is encrypted and no longer considered vulnerable as it's transferring back and forth to like that page file and stuff where all that information is saved. And then when the computer comes back awake, it calls up that information, it's encrypted memory. Um, that's the difference between basically the pro and the non-pro variants. They are the same otherwise. This isn't bad though, this isn't all bad. This just at least tells us <clears throat> that 4000 series is gonna have to be better than this, right? I don't think the 4000 series desktop processors that we're all waiting for are gonna include built-in graphics at all. I, built, I feel like this is a stopgap. I feel like they had so much silicon left over from its very successful 3000 series um, that they had to do something with it. And that's what this is, which is again, not a bad thing. And to be fair, I don't think anyone's shopping for Ryzen level CPU multi-threading capabilities um, and, and performance are gonna give really a rat's ass about integrated graphics. Integrated graphics, we, we like them around here because it's another tool to use for troubleshooting. 
especially when you're trying to troubleshoot bad graphics cards or things like that. Um, it's also developers can find a way to utilize the built-in graphics to do something in... AMD has always been pro-asynchronous computing, and it was one of the things that started way back in the... Uh, async went all the way back to, I think... I think it went all the way back to like the A-series APUs. But anyway, moving on, um, it, they always found a way to make that GPU do something. And they've used it to help with AI in various games. They've used it to help with just extra compute power for like NPCs and stuff like that. Um, and I'm all for extra processor power to do something, as long as the developers leverage it. But I, I don't think it's a selling point for any of this, for, for any enthusiasts, which is who they are literally targeting this to with that line right there. Consumers can now enjoy enthusiast level performance. CPU performance is the only thing enthusiast about it. These graphics are not it. I anticipate 4,000 series processors that we've all been waiting for to be Zen 2 Plus, and probably times sometime around Big Navi's launch, which we know is gonna be sometime around the console launches. So anyway, this information hit my inbox. They were like, hey, talk about it, and I did. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe I'll get another angry email to add to my list of companies that are pissed off with Jace Two Cents today. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this naming? Do you think it's disingenuine? Do you think it's a bit of a bait and, not a bait and switch, but a, a bit, I don't know, misleading, if you will? Because I really don't see what's wrong with 3700G. Yeah, why, why not keep the current naming and add a G to it? Oh, crap, and I forgot that the pros are 4750s. <laughs> So you've got 4,000, jeez, 4,350, 4,650, 4,750. So the pros just add a 50 to the end because it's a half better, I guess. Word to the wise though, if you are searching for a 4,000 series processor in the future and you go on Craigslist or forums or whatever, if you see any of these part numbers and they're calling them 4,000 series desktop processors, don't get ripped off because they're not. And you'll know they came out of an OEM and not an actual CPU, like, you know, consumer off the shelf box item. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm sure you guys are gonna rip me a new one in the comments because all the AMD fanboys will refuse to believe that AMD can do any wrong. And I think this is misleading and disingenuine. And I think it dilutes their brand that they've done a really good job over the last five years of building up. There's no reason they couldn't have just called this, like Phil just said, a 3700G, whatever. Thanks for watching guys as always. We'll see you in the next one.